Clope and Nidik Minster welcomes you to this broadcast of high school girls varsity basketball here on NK Telco Sports. We're at the barn this afternoon where the Houston Wildcats are in town to take on the homestanding Nanoxville Rangers. Tonight's game will be brought to you by Crown Equipment Corporation, First National Bank, Keyhole Pizza, Winner's Meats, Sydney Auglais Audiology, Precision Strip, Wagner's IGA, New Knoxville Supply, and NK Telco. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dennis Henschen, uh, joined by Jeff Henschen this afternoon on stats and commentary. We'll take a look at uh, the keys to the game right now as we're getting ready, closing in on the last couple minutes of warm-up. Let's take a look, first of all, at the keys to the game for the Houston Wildcats. Brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. First of all, according to Coach Brad Allen, he wants to minimize their mistakes. They feel New Knoxville is way too good a team to make uh, both mental and physical mistakes against, so they must mentally and physically reduce their mistakes. He's worried also a little bit about taking care of the ball, both on the pass as well as the dribble, so they that's a big item. And he said, basically, box out, rebound. That's uh, almost a standard format for everyone, but execute on offense. Not quite happy with how they finish sometimes. Don't use the intensity that they've had in the past. So those are the four items that he lists as keys to the game for his Houston Wildcats. Now here's Jeff with the uh, keys to the game for the New Knoxville Rangers. Coach Hegemeyer wants to continue his team's ball movement on offense. The better they move the ball, the better shots they get. New Knoxville comes in averaging 12 assists a game. So they want to continue to have good ball movement. They want to create steals. That oftentimes will lead to some good transition buckets. Currently, the Rangers come in averaging 13 steals a game. They want to continue to put ball pressure on and get those steals that can, again, convert to transition hoops. And also, three-point shooting for the Rangers is a pretty good percentage this year, 37%. They want to continue to shoot at that high percentage. The Rangers knock down about four triples per game. By doing so, that really helps open up the whole floor then and force the House of Wildcats, in this case, to defend the whole half court. Those are your keys for the Rangers. Again, brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. We'll be back here in just a moment or two. In fact, we are in the last minute prior to uh, the national anthem. There goes the buzzer right now. Uh, just to let you know that the uh, starting lineup said in a little bit will be brought to you by Sydney Auglaise Audio Audiology. So uh, they're happy to present that. We'll have Gary Schrolicky, our PA announcer, bring those to you, as well as we'll take a look at the referees, the coaches, and the players. So if you would just pause with us for 39 seconds. Oh, I guess I could give you the referees. They all might be on the screen right now. They are Asa Donaldson, Mark Keller, and Jeff Grijar, all well-known in the area as referees at varsity level sports, both boys and girls. Lift your career to new heights with Crown, an innovative global leader in the material handling industry with over a 75 year history of growth and success. We're seeking career minded candidates for a wide variety of entry level and skilled positions in our new Bremen, New Knoxville, Salina, Minster and other US locations. Visit crown.jobs to apply or find us on social media by searching careers at Crown. Clope Corporation, America's favorite garage door, is now hiring for all manufacturing and over-the-road Class A CDL driving positions. Clope is the largest residential garage door manufacturer in North America, and we are continuing to grow. Join our team and work in a safe, clean, modern environment. Clope offers a great benefits package as an equal opportunity employer and a drug-free work environment. Imagine the possibilities when you open the door to your career at clopecom careers. Are you looking for a new career with amazing growth potential? NEDEC Press and Automation is hiring for many positions right now. NEDEC is a global company that is growing with its sights on being a billion dollar company. Machinists, service technicians, human resource personnel, IT specialists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and many more. The opportunities abound at NEDEC Press and Automation. Go to MinsterJobs.com now to get started on your new career with NEDEC. Okay, we're back here at the barn where we're just getting ready for the introductions of the players and coaches. 
Mr. Schalke has just given us the referees as Asa Donaldson, Mark Keller, and Jeff Greaseville. Now, first player out for the Houskin Wildcats. Number four, Katie Meyer, averaging 10.2. She's a sophomore. Number 23 is next out. That's Emma Kent. She's a 5'6", junior, number 23. Number 21, next one out, Taylor Maxwell, wearing number 21, standing 5 feet 9, and she's a junior. Then, at guard, number 3, Riley Boisard, a senior, 5 feet 4. She's averaging 5.6 points a game. And another senior, number 5, Megan Meyer, She's averaging nine a game, and as I said, she is also the other senior. They are going to be coached today by Brad Swigert. Who, or I'm sorry, Adam Swigert, with Brad Allen being on the absence list. So Brad, Adam Swigert in his second year will be taking over for head coach Brad Allen. The first one out for the Rangers will be Becca Luffel, number three. And then we'll have number 10. Carson Henschen, she's a 6'1 senior. Also, 5 feet 10 inches. Number four, Avery Henschen, also a senior. And at a guard position, number two, standing 5'5, five five, Haley Flutterjohn. She is likewise a senior. And rounding out the starting five is number 32, Ellie Gable, 5'6", senior. Those are starting lineup, all seniors. They're being coached by Tim Hegemeyer in his 17th year. He's assisted by Matt Gable and Court Fletterjohn. So, Jeff, we're rolling here. Uh, Wildcats come in with a record of 6-6 yes. six and six on the season or 3-4 and four in Shelby County Athletic League action. They average 42 points a game. They give up 45 points a game. Rangers come in in 10 and 1 on the year and 4 and 0 in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Rangers score the ball at 47 points a game and give up just 24. So defense the key this season so far for the Rangers as they continue to create ball pressure and um, have really shut down some opponents here as of late. Yes, the Rangers look like they can score as far I'm sorry, it looks like the Wildcats can score when they have opportunities because they've only really lost 3 games by what I'd call blowout numbers and those are two three very good teams Rushi, uh, Botkins and uh, Lormy so they're only losing to the very best uh, and beating all the rest so first shot there taken by the Rangers is no good tipped out of bounds by the Rangers will turn over there to the Wildcats on a team rebound 736 starting here in period number one drive there by number four Meyer, Katie, coming all the way around was Boisard. Kick inside, nice left-handed up there by Meyer, not good enough. Rebounded by the Rangers. Nice off ball movement there as Meyer had a nice cut and he got a nice pass, just uh, couldn't finish, but nice execution against a very good New Knoxville defense. Leffel has it on the baseline. Now Flutter John looks again and uh, the in angle kind of bad there as they're trying to slant it in and defense was playing too far over and uh, just a bad angle and tipped out of bounds by the Wildcats. Flitter John again from the right corner. That one's off the back of the iron, a little long. Tipped out of bounds by the Rangers. So again, team rebound number two for the House and Wildcats. Mentioned the Rangers come in, very good three-point shooting team on the season at 37%. Flitter John, one of the leaders on the team at 46.5%. She's made 20 of 43. Um, over two to start here, so keep that in mind as the Wildcats maybe get a bit of a break if you know, Knoxville can't hit those shots. Definitely will help in their ability, if you will, to uh, challenge the Rangers. Knoxville in a man-to-man -man defense, a steal there by Henschen. Avery, she takes it full court, lays it in for a deuce. A scoop and a score for Henschen. Didn't get it real high on the glass at the other end, but able to get it above the rim and use the bank board to capitalize on that turnover and result in transition points. It was one of those 13 steals a game they average, and this time it results in instant offense for the Rangers. And there was a tra travel as under pressure, number 21, Taylor Maxwell lifted her pivot foot, and they got her for a travel. Rangers are now being faced by, it looks like either a 1-3-1. I think it's a 1-3-1. One. One. They opened that up with that in the opening tip. 
Gable has it, that top kicks it over to Leffel on the right wing. She lets a three fly. That goes off the back of the iron, off the Rangers once again. Another team rebound for Houston. That's three triple tries for the Rangers, all from that same corner and all same results. New Knoxville not able to get an offensive rebound, and it goes off of their hands, and Houston has been the beneficiary of three team defensive rebounds. Megan Meyer, the senior, dribbles it across the timeline. She's being harassed there right now by Carson Henschen. A hedge defense. Got to make sure you don't use your hands too much out that high. And there's a shot from three-point land by Voicerd. Long rebound picked up by Henschen, who kicks it over to Gable along the baseline. Gable penetrates, kicks it to Flutter John, who's now at the top of the circle. That rattles around, but doesn't go down. And then there's a... Bump and fall there at the line, and it looks like it'll be one of the rare the times the Rangers don't get the give the team rebound away. Instead, they'll have an offensive tee rebound. This time, the missed triple goes off the hands of the House and Wildcats. And there was a nice inbounds play, but Henshin was unable to convert as she might have gotten hit in the eye. See her rubbing it as she comes back up the floor. It looks a little red on that side of the face. So the missed layup turns into a steal there, a rebound by. Henshin knocks it away, nearly a little body contact. Got to get it further around. And there's a out of bounds off the Rangers underneath the basket. So it'll be Houston's ball underneath their own basket. Melissa Waterman in for New Knoxville as Henshin takes care of the poke in the eye. It looks like she got. Megan Meyer to inbound for Houston. Kicks it in there to Katie Meyer. Katie with a turnaround, nice move in the paint. Yeah, draws the foul and the score. So she's going to the line for the old fashioned three. Foul goes against New Knoxville's Haley Flutterjohn, her first team's first. Meyer leads the Wildcats in offense. The 5'8 sophomore averaging 10.2 a game and a chance here to give the Wildcats their first lead. The missed free throw does not go in though and the score remains tied. There's a foul, a lot of hand contact down, trying to tie up Henshin, and Rangers will get the benefit of a foul against 13, or 23, Emma Kemp, her first, team's first. There's a pass to the deep in the left corner to Flutterjohn, off the backside of the iron, dances around, doesn't go in, but off of the Rangers, team rebound for Houston, number three, I believe, or number four. It's the Fifth defensive rebound. I think only one of them have really been a true rebound. The rest, the other four have been team rebounds. And just a slow start here for New Knoxville. They got off to a good start against Fort Recovery on Thursday. Key was they made shots. They've not shot a very good percentage here to start. Shot there by Meyer. Rebounded on the long rebounded by Henschen. Stolen by Houston. Tried to be put in by... Houston stolen by Flutterjohn, and Flutterjohn takes it up to four and knocked away by Houston. House Knoxville's ball underneath their own basket. And here comes Henshin back in the game, and she'll replace Luffel. Ellie Gable to trigger the inbounds. There's a nice steal there by Meyer. And Myers fouled this before the timeline by Avery Henschen, I believe, yes. Pretty good play there by, I believe it was Meyer. She read the entry pass and quickly went down to collapse on New Knoxville and create the turnover. So yep. good defensive play there is a court awareness, if you will, seeing what the Rangers offense was trying to do and making a good play on defense. There's a nice play as a, Katie Meyer goes across the lane and she, she hits uh, number 24, Kayla Winter, I believe, for the basket. 23, Emma Kemp with the basket. Emma she Kemp, averages five and a half points a game. Nice ball movement, breaking down the Rangers defense again and getting a high quality shot. And Wildcats have hung around here and take their first lead. There's a three by Gable, no good. They surround the ball at the baseline. Kicked around, picked up by the Rangers, Avery. Kicks it over to her sister Carson. Carson goes up for an easy deuce. 4-4 with three minutes and 17 Rangers seconds Rangers get a break there. They create the steal in the backcourt and then go to work offensively and get a point off turnover again. That's her fourth such point off turnover here in a quarter. Both their baskets, if you will, have come off turnovers. 
Myers entry pass there to Kemp is too long. Out of bounds, and we're gonna have a timeout, 30 seconds. We'll stay right here. Just to remind you that our five-star recruitment sponsor today is Crown Equipment Corporation. The MVP sponsors for this broadcast are Clope and Nidek Minster. Scoreboard brought to you by First National Bank. Keys to the game were brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. Replays, winter meets. Our starting lineups were brought to you by Sydney Orglaze Audiology. Timeout sponsor is Precision Strip, so this is a Precision Strip timeout. Stats and recap are brought to you by Wagner's IGA. Our NK Telco Live View sponsor is the New Knoxville Supply Company. And the player of the game will be brought to you by NK Telco. Gable brings the ball across the floor, now up the floor, across the timeline for the Rangers. Offsets it to the right to Flutter John down along the baseline. Zone defense has been pretty good so far to start the half quarter, if you will, for Houston. New Knoxville's not been able to get any shots really to drop to the perimeter, so that makes any type of defense work well, but they've not allowed a lot of offensive to happen in the interior. It's been a lot of perimeter jump shooting by the Rangers, and uh, as of right now, Knoxville has not been able to cash in on those jumpers. There's a turnaround jumper by Henschen off the right block. It's good there with no glass. Or it's the first points of the quarter for the Rangers where it hasn't been five on five, and first two buckets came in transition and then another one was a backcourt steal where the Rangers able to go to work kind of three on three, three on two if you will and that's the first points the Rangers have scored against a full half court defense. Katie Meyer handling the ball, penetrates into the paint. It's Had blocked, a block there. by someone. And again a nice drive through there by Megan Meyer. Shot up there by I believe it was Voicer. Yeah, her three no good, Carson Henson with the rebound. They reverse it, Henschen from the top of the circle, no good. Rebounded by Flutterjohn, kicked out to Gable. Gable penetrates, slashes across the key, no good. Rebounded there by Voicer. So Riley has it, kicks it over to Megan Meyer, and Megan brings it across the timeline. Good job by the house in defense so far. They've really made it difficult in New Oxford's offense. Both teams' defense really working nicely here as offenses have struggled. And there's a tie-up along the baseline, I think. Yes, sir. Arrow will point towards Houston. So the ball stays here. We have a substitution here. We got Taylor Maxwell back in the game, replacing Kemp. Yeah, both teams playing, uh, I'll call it very tough. And there's an inbounds pass kicked away by Gable. Six to four in favor of the Rangers. One minute and 30 seconds to go here in period number one. Saturday afternoon basketball. There's an illegal screen almost by Maxwell, but uh, three-pointer by Meyer off the mark. And there's a turnover as the Rangers tried to get out and run, and Avery Henson makes a mistake, travels with the ball, timeout or turnover there for third turnover of the quarter for the Rangers as they've. Uh, you know, giving the ball up, and Houston's already had five turnovers, so each team helping the other. Yes, and shooting has not been real high percentage so far, so that's why we have a kind of a low-scoring game here the first minutes of the first quarter. There's a nice pick and roll, but the basket couldn't be converted. A near steal there by Meyer. Gable has it. Slashes into the paint, stops, pops right in front of the iron, and puts it in for a deuce. Eight to four. Again, going to get in points, if you will, for New Knoxville. Not necessarily a fast break, but before Houston could set up in her half-court defense, and Knoxville took advantage of the opportunity, and second two points for Ellie Gable. She leads the team and score at 13.4. There's another pick and roll, and that one is picked off by the secondary defense. Gable, head fake, goes across. Had it short. New Knoxville had the rebound. I believe they knocked it away from each other. Nice drive there by Meyer, and she's fouled, I believe, by Gable. I can't quite see who. Gable picks up her first foul, team foul number three. It was on the floor, I believe, so it'll be common out of bounds. Just the third New Knoxville team foul. And the inbounds pass is Flutter John knocks out of it out of bounds. Again, New Knoxville playing pretty tight defense here on the out of bounds, making it difficult for the Wildcats. 
Nice motion, a free one off the baseline there to Winner. Didn't make it, right off the iron, but a nice inbounds play by the Cats. Final 10 seconds. Seven. And Gable lights one up there from the right wing. One second, and that'll be it. So, at the end of the first quarter, it is Knoxville 11, Houston 4. We'll take a break, we'll be right back. At First National Bank, we are working hard to make your life a little easier. With products like Card Valet, an app allowing you to control your cards with real-time notifications, transaction restrictions, and spending limits. The ability to access your money through 55,000 all-point ATMs across the country, surcharge free. Live customer support when you need it. And online and mobile banking, allowing you to gain access to your financial information wherever and whenever you like. First National Bank, making your life a little easier. Hi, I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Okay, we're back here at the barn. We'll take a look at the first half, first quarter stats there brought to you by Wagner's IGA. So Jeff, take a look, what is it? Field goal shooting for both teams kind of poor, if you will, New Knoxville. Five of 15 from the field. They were one of eight included in that from three point range. Houston just two of 11 from the field and Houston attempted three three point shots in the quarter, made none. Only foul shot taken was by Houston, which was missed. Turnovers, Houston committed six, New Knoxville committed three. You know, get some offense late in the quarter to kind of open it up. They actually trailed, I believe it was, four to two. As there's a Ranger turnover. A lot of hands around Henshin as she will come create the steal herself. <laughs> gets a steal back. She loses it. She well, gets the pass it back. was intended for her, but there were three red shirts around her. Gets stolen by House, and then Henshin somehow gets steals steal. it back, gets the assist, and Gable finishes. Avery actually leads a team in assists with or second on the team with 3.4 assists per game. Gable leads the squad at 3.8 assists, and as a team, the Rangers average 12 assists a game. Myers, number Myers five, senior leading on scorer on the team with five or nine points a game. Kind of panics there and throws it away. I don't Myers. know if that was a shot or saw a teammate, but she was in trouble, and you know, also comes up with a basketball. There's Gable from the baseline, no good. But rebounded there by Henshin. She's trying to go up and she's tied up. So possession arrow will be to Houston. So the Cats get a team rebound there. Houston very aggressive. They're always around the basketball. I mean, they have put two and three bodies on the ball when it gets in the inside. You Knoxville, you know, have to keep that in mind because it's two or three on you. If you can get it out, someone's open somewhere because the house is really smothering the basketball. These people can score, they proved it. They're in the uh, Shelby County Athletic League and there's some very good teams in the Shelby County Athletic League, inclu including number one in the state, Fort Warmy. There's Gable from the left, left elbow, so to speak, extended. Three pointer and it's good. Oh, only a two pointer, I'm sorry. 16-4 is the score, we'll stay right here. Take a look at uh, our sponsors for today's game. They are Crown Equipment Corporation, First National Bank, Keyhole Pizza, Winner's Meats, Sydney Alglaze Audiology, Precision Strip, Wagner's IGA, New Knoxville Supply, and NK Telco. Also, a partner in good broadcasting of Mercer and Alglaze County ball games are, is WCSM AM 1350 and 96.7 FM. You can hear their games exclusively on www.wcsmradio.com and you can do that all season long for sports in Auglaise, Mercer, and Shelby County. I want to remind you that NK Telco Sports and its sponsors are pleased to bring you highlights of today's ball game. You can see these highlights on Channel 3 or HD 503. Today's broadcast can be seen again Saturday, January 15th. It's a week from today at 2 p.m. and Thursday, January the 20th at 9 p.m. You can watch these games on demand anytime on YouTube, Facebook, 
and at nktelco.com slash sports. Remember that. That's an important uh, internet address that you can use and bring this stuff up anytime and for anyone. So we got a sub here late. Mentioned earlier that Dunox was three-point shooting, 37% on the season, very good percentage. Um, Gable had hit her last one to cause a timeout. She's now two for three from that range, and actually she leads the Rangers in three-point shooting at 46%. Haley Flairjohn second on a team at just under 43%, so both those girls shoot it really well. Gable off to a good start, two of three. Flairjohn struggling a bit here to start the game at over four, but uh, Gable has come alive here with a couple three-point buckets late in the first quarter and then that one just here recently to give them their 16th point. There was a pass knocked out of bounds by Henshin and it's a good thing because if that gotten by, there were two people at the basket and there was nobody at home to stop Houston from playing it. Good decision there by number four, Katie Meyer. You can go in the backcourt to get the ball, but she almost her momentum was so strong. If she would have touched it and then stepped in the front court, going to the backcourt, it would have been a violation. So she waited and made sure it went in the backcourt and didn't have a, a violation. There was Megan Meyer with a shot, and it's they it's off as they battle for it. It'll be off of I think that's uh, a good call. A lot of times you have two players going up like that on the rebound. You know, went out of bounds. Who touched it last? Hard to tell, but it also maybe could have been a foul on the defense, or the offense in this case, Housen. So you just make it easy, give the ball to the defense for the good positioning and, and move on, and um, tough to tell sometimes who hits those Rebounds, out of bounds. There's a pass inside now to Henshin. There's three girls See how quickly, on her. yes, exactly. See how quickly they smother the ball when it drops down. So they're going to force you Knoxville to score from the outside or, in this case, drive. And Henshin did a nice job, just couldn't get it to drop. But that's a nice move. Okay, she gets her own rebound tie-up. So it'll be a, a Team Ranger basketball, yep, Ranger's another basket. look here on the offensive opportunity to keep the possession alive. And There's an inbounds knocked away. Henshin missed the first one, got her own rebound. She's followed on the second not attempt. quick enough to get it up off the glass, and we'll be lucky to get her offensive rebound, though, and pick up a foul against Katie Meyer, her first. She appeared not to be happy with herself, but uh, so be it. So our first free throw attempt dances around and jumps out. Just her second now, her I should say her third attempt on the season. This is her fifth game she's played. She missed seven with a broken finger, so played four games, averaging for the Rangers just under 12 points a game. Second one does the same thing, dances around and comes out. Now the Rangers sit into a soft press. There's a near, oh, and she did. It's, she stepped out of bounds. I thought it was near the line, and when... Uh, the Houston player came down with it. She stepped on the sideline. For Houston, that's their 10th turnover of the first half. Dean Knoxville has just four and only one here in the quarter. A lot of bodies again. Houston really, when it goes into paint, they um, really collapse quickly. There's a flare. That was Gable. Gable. Rebounded by Henschen. Carson, and she uh, looked to kick it out. Couldn't find any exit pass. So we will have a chance to go to the foul line and right back where she just was where she had two of them rim in and out so these are tough shots knowing you just missed two of them the same style where they bounced in and out so you got to clear your mind and you know, go back to the uh, good feeling you have when you make the shots so, so these are tough you're over three now so you're obviously thinking you don't want to go over four so that begins to play on your your rhythm and your confidence Nice delivery there with a little spin, so it goes in. So one for four as she stands right now. Soft zone coming up. And there's a pass that goes from. Not for sure if it was touched by Carson on the sideline. It was not. I thought maybe she got a leg nope. on it. White ball. So the fifth turnover back-to-back -back in that Ranger defense. They've caused the Wildcats here. A so two quick turnovers by the Wildcats have limited their ability to get shots off. They remain scoreless here. In the second period, the Oxfords put up six points. And Melissa's Waterman's pass is knocked out of bounds, but it'll stay with the Rangers. Inbounded and now to Flutter John. She gets into the crack. And Henshin is tied up as she tries to penetrate. See how quickly Houston just smothers and 
pretty quick. New Knoxville a little slow getting the ball kind of out. When you see it coming, you get rid of it quickly, force him to chase, and uh, good job defensively by the Wildcats. And the Rangers drop back now, just a straight man-to-man. -man. Trying to pick up the pressure is one of their themes in the last week or so. And let, there's a three-pointer by number three, rebounded by number 10. Off of uh, Houston's hand, team rebound there. So Even there, Dunashville had a hand on the house and hustles over, wow. creates havoc, loose ball, and then it goes off of a Wildcat, a 30-second timeout for the Rangers. 30-second timeout here on the floor. Just to remind you that our MVP sponsors today are Clope and Niedek Minster, and they're very pleased to bring you this broadcast on NK Kelso Sports as they are throughout the season. We will have this broadcast this afternoon. We will likewise have a broadcast this evening from the barn. And that will be with the Jackson Center men versus the New Knoxville men. And Jackson Center, a very impressive team. Losing to Botkins, I think, last night by five. And is Botkins in the top five in the state? Number one. Suffered a loss New Year's Eve against Murray Local at home, a tough one-point loss, and uh, but that's their only setback for the defending Division IV state champions, Bakins Trojans. And Jamison Meyer had a huge night last night against Jackson Center as they shut down the Plymans, but Meyer goes off at 26 points, and you know they got a lot of players that can get it done. And there's an entry pass from Fleur John to Avery Henschen, and Avery goes up instantly, but she's fouled from behind. Katie Meyer, number four for the Wildcats, her second foul. She fouls number four for New Knoxville, Avery Henschen, and she will now have two free throws. Henschen, 67% shooter on the season. Rangers have struggled from the line today, just one of four. Like a two for five. Came in shooting as a team, 72, I'm sorry, 70. 3%. That went down so far. That one bounces off the iron left also. They stay in it as Katie Meyer looks, throws a long pass, intercepted there by Carson Henschen. Good job kind of playing center field, if you will. And There's Avery driving through the center, receives a nice pass from Haley Flutterjohn. Her six Sist points of the game, she averages 13.1. That's second on the team. Gable leads the Rangers at 13.4. Carson Henschen at 11.8, and Flutter John at 7.8. The top four leading scorers for the Rangers. Housen commits her seventh turnover of the quarter, 13th of the game. Okay. Berkemeyer enters the game for sure. 8-0 run here for the Rangers to start the second quarter. They've opened up now a 15-point lead. Melissa Waterman from 18 feet along the baseline. Nothing to cord. Had a decent game scoring-wise against for recovery on Thursday and kind of continues that hot shooting there with a, the baseline jump shot. Timeout on the floor. And we'll take a quick break and be right back. Allglaze and Sydney Audiology are committed to providing the most advanced and affordable hearing care solutions. Did you know that more and more insurances are offering coverage for hearing needs and that we are the most comprehensive provider in the area? Because we want to serve all in our community, we partner with agencies such as Medicaid, OOD, Sertoma, and most recently the VA, helping our veterans find local solutions to their problems. Don't leave unused benefits on the table this year. Call us today to see if you qualify. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. Crown Equipment Corporation, Grand Lake Health. Okay, inbounds being to Houston underneath their own basket. They got to come 84 feet. Myers directing a little traffic. There's a skip pass. Nice idea. That's the another type one. of uh, pass you need against a trap. You got to be able to snap the ball quickly. 
House did a nice job doing that. There was a shot by Boisard from the left wing over on the right wing, and I think there's going to be a push on number 10. And they give Waterman a steal and then a foul against House. And boy, they did a nice job breaking that press when you can throw it diagonally with some mustard on it. That's how you break down those presses, and if teams can't, you know, that creates a lot of easy steals for the defensive team. But uh, House comes up empty and commits the foul against Berkmeyer. Letter John, or Gable looks, kicks it in to Henshin, back out to, to uh, Gable. Rebound by Flutter John. Over to Gable. Gable off the glass. Nice deuce off the right side block. Slightly extended, maybe an eight footer. Offensive opportunity there. The Rangers cash in on. They've got about three points, if you will, on offensive rebounds. And those add up in a hurry when you can be efficient on your possessions. Over there on the right corner, Berkemeyer is kind of harassed, tries to enter the ball. Stolen there by Gable. Gable goes up. Underneath, hits, knocked off the foam, but it must have been touched. I thought of maybe as she Meyer. got to go into the right, she would snap it behind the back pass to Flutter John, but the angle not maybe quite there. And instead, the defense forced a little bit deeper than she wanted. But uh, for the Rangers, fortunately, able to get the uh, second look here. Boyser went up with it. There's Henschen. As uh, she brought it down, goes back up, but she's fouled in the act. So she's going to the line to shoot two. That's Personal foul Carson. for the Houston, number 23, oh, her man. third. Wow, I didn't realize Kemp had three quick ones now. Henshin back to the line, made her last free throw attempt. That one rattles around and stays in instead of rattle around and stays out. And a chance here to make this one and go three for six after missing her first three. A make here would give her three in a row, and it looks good, and it is it good. Is so good. maybe get those bad ones out of the way. And for Move Carson, on. that's her fifth point of the game. Boyser over to Meyer. Meyer looks, put it above her head, goes across court. It was there. And there is a shot attempt on the block by Tyler Maxwell. She's fouled by Avery Henshin. Now be Henshin's second foul. Again, good ball movement by Houston, and he passed the ball faster than you can run. And Kind of a bad decision closing out there against Houston, who's had trouble scoring. You're going to give him a free chance here from the foul line with two free throws. And Meyer's first free throw is good. Maxwell, or I'm sorry, Maxwell, I'm sorry, Maxwell. with her Maxwell. first point of the game. She averages five and a half a game for the Wildcats. They're led in the score by, by Katie Meyer at 10, and then Megan Meyer at 9, and then Maxwell, Kemp, and Boisard all at about five and a half per game. So Gable brings it across the line for the Rangers. First two points of the quarter for the Wildcats. It comes just with over two minutes to play. Flitter John looks, penetrates, Henshin from the left wing. A three, in and out. Rebounded by Maxwell. Brought up the floor by Meyer. She looks, keeps her dribble alive. Hands off on us to Burke Meyer. Burke Meyer back to her. She penetrates there nicely and gets it to number 32, Laney Peacock. And Peacock puts it in for a nice layup. Rangers gamble, things got a little hectic there. Backside didn't rotate over quick enough and Peacock did a nice job receiving a nice bounce pass and then putting in for her first two points of the game. Foul will be on number 10, I believe, Taylor Berkmeyer. That will be the team's seventh. So Gable is going to get to go to the line for a one and one. Gable, one of the better free throw shooters in the area. She leads the Rangers at 87%, 21 of 24 from the free throw line for the 5'6 senior, averaging 13.4 points a game. And there's another one that dances in and out. And Luffel thought she had a tie up, but. Uh, Referee thought all differently, so she's a charge Her with the foul. Her third foul, team's fifth. Her third? Her first. Oh, first. Sorry, team's fifth. <clears throat> Back Rangers able to set up now their 2-2-1 press. There's a shot along the baseline. It trickles around. Grabbed there by Carson Henschen as she brings it out on the break. Can't quite try to kind of, if you will, step through and just a defender there for the Wildcats made it tough, couldn't swing it through. Maxwell goes up, she has it knocked away by Flutterjohn. 
So it'll be uh, Houston's ball, Wildcats ball underneath their own basket, going to be triggered in there by Megan Meyer. Megan's got it, looking, here they come. Here they come, fighting through the traffic. Goes to Burke Meyer, Burke Meyer with a drive across what, the What paint. are you supposed to do other than stand straight like that? I didn't see any, wow, that's a tough break if you're a defensive player, not for sure what you're supposed to do. So Houston, maybe a break there. Burke Meyer will get two free throws. She's scoreless in the game today. And that one doesn't go down for her. That rattles around. Free throw shooting for the Rangers has been a, a little under the percentage. I don't know Houston stats. So that's her. Um, they are now three, four, five in first half shooting free throws. And that foul was on number 10. That was on Henschen. First. Her first, her first, her first, first yep. or number 10 made the free throw. That's why the board, oh, okay. that side just puts up who scores or fouls. The foul was on 10, the, buck, the free throw was made by 10. 25 seconds here to go in the first half. I believe the Rangers are really looking just to take one more shot. There's a pick and roll attempt with Waterman and Gable. Luffel from the left wing, good for a three. Gets it down. Her 10th made three-point basket of the season. There is a long shot by Megan Meyer. No good off the board. Picked up by the Rangers. Score remains 28 to 9. Halftime is upon us. We'll return with stats from the first half in a few moments. Take a break. Be right back. Wagner's IGA has been servicing their communities for more than 95 years, spanning three generations. Wagner's founded their business on two basic principles, excellent customer service and quality products. Visit all our locations and experience the finest selection of deli, fresh meats, and variety of beverage choices. While there, don't forget to check out our vast selection of fresh coffee beans, produce, dairy, and bakery items. Visit Wagner's today in Minster, Fort Laramie, and New Bremen, and check us out on Facebook. Kemmler Orthopedic Center is focused on a personalized, caring approach to treat all aspects of orthopedics, including total joint replacement, shoulder reconstruction, stem cell injections, and more. Dr. James Kemmler and Jed Cooney, certified PA, are dedicated to providing the best orthopedic care in the Grand Lake region. Kemmler Orthopedic Center has offices located in Salina and Van Wert, along with extended evening hours. To schedule an appointment, call our office at 419-586-5760. We are here, and here, and here. Minster Bank is everywhere, providing every banking service that you need to keep your financial life in order. Whether you are on the go or stopping by one of our branches, Minster Bank is here for you. We proudly support the communities where you live. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant. Whatever it takes. CarriageWorks has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. CarriageWorks thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. Okay, we're back here at uh, halftime at the Cope Nedic Minster 
broadcast here from New Knoxville High School where the Houston Wildcats are in town playing the New Knoxville Rangers. We'll take a look at the uh, halftime stats brought to you by Wagner's IGA. Field goal shooting in the first half for New Knoxville. They hit on 11 of 28 attempts. Included in that 20 attempts were three of 13 from three point range. Houston just three of 17 from the field. They were 0 of seven included in that from three point range. New Knoxville just three of nine from the free throw line. And Houston made three of five turnovers. New Knoxville six. Houston committed 16. Rebounding New Knoxville with 19 rebounds. Houston with 16 leading scores in the half for the Wildcats. These four players each score two points. Katie Meyer, Taylor Maxwell, Emma Kemp, and Laney <coughs> Peacock, and then one point from Taylor Burkmeyer, their total of nine. For New Knoxville, Ellie Gable thir- uh, with 12 points, Avery Henshin with six, Carson Henshin with five, Rebecca Luffel with three, and Melissa Waterman with two, their total of 28. And that's where we stand as we head into the third quarter. Thank you to Wagner's IGA for sponsoring our stats and recap here at halftime. It'll be Rangers ball at midcourt to start the second half here. Asa Donaldson to hand it over to Becca Luffel. And it looks like the Houston Wildcats will stay in their 1-3-1. That's where they've stayed throughout the first half. And Knoxville hasn't shot a great percentage from outside. And uh, when they do throw it inside, Houston really collapses and has created some trouble, if you will, for the Rangers to simply, you know, say inside-out game. <clears throat> and there's a ticky-tack foul on the outside. As I the mean, it's a ticky-tack. It was a bad play on Mort- Morgan, Megan Meyer to commit the contact. Yeah, but, but uh, not we've real. seen worse. But uh, quick whistle and a first foul against Meyer. Her first team's first. Rangers have it. Trying to run their offense. Baseline there by Flutter John. Skip pass to Carson Henschen over to Becca Luffel. Now she drives baseline back out as they exchange position. Flutter John with the uh, layup. Doesn't go down. Carson Henschen with the rebound. She's fouled on the stick back. Haley had a nice move to the basket coming from the right side. Trying to finish from the left hand in front of the rim. And it doesn't go down. But Henschen there for another offensive rebound. And after missing her first three free throws of the game, has made her next three, but misses here on the first one. So number 24 enters the contest for Houston. Kayla Winner in the lineup. Henshin's next one doesn't go down, so score remains the same, 28 to nine. They fall into a uh, 2-2 zone. Houston, if they can throw a quick diagonal pass, that would help. But uh, they get a sideline entry, if you will, not able to really cash in. New Knoxville had four players basically up on the ball. And when Henshin goes out to defend, someone on the backside's really got to hustle back to play goalkeeper, if you will. So as they now enter it, now the Rangers are back into their man-to-man. Meyer dives into the paint, pulls up, shoots a jumper there, but doesn't get it. Carson Henshin with a rebound. Flutter John drives, kicks it back out to Gable. Gable didn't go down. Now along the baseline, trapped for a little bit, now brought out by Myers as she almost double dribbled. Man to man defense by the Rangers. They've played that throughout, even with the full court press they've put on here late. And it's off of somebody's foot, stays with the Wildcats. So let's see what who will trigger it in here. Megan Meyer on the trigger for the Cats. A little Xing inside. Here comes Meyer through, stolen by Gable. Gable with the steal, a deflection, I should say, and a steal, and a nice and finish. Almost an alley oop scoop as she went through one oh, defender, wow. split him, and lays it in. Her 14th point on the night. That's just above her average of 13.4. But a nice move to get the ball around the defender keep her momentum and enough strength, if you will, then to finish off the glass and give her the credit there. She stole, stole it at the far end, came off the full length of the court to cash in the layup. There's a drive by Voicer. Nothing. Meyer back to Voicer. Voicer drives, shoots a jumper. Blocked there by Henshin. 
She picks it up over to Fletcher John. The lead pass is too big. Over to Gable and Gable up and she scores. Offensive scored. foul, Gable. So good job there by number four, Katie Meyer, standing in the path, if you will. And so bang, bang, play. The call goes in favor of the house and Katie Meyer takes the charge. She anticipated well because that happened. She planted herself long before that ever happened. Gable picks up her second fouls of the game. First of the half for New Knoxville. Meyer has it. Picks up her dribble. Now over to Katie. First one was Megan. There's a entry pass into the paint. Kind of behind the her teammate and made it tough to get through and results in the turnover. Leffel from the top. And nothing but cord for Leffel as she buries a three. 30-second timeout will be taken by the Wildcats. So we'll stay here and remind you that this broadcast is sponsored by Clope and Nedek, and they welcome you to review these games at your leisure on NK Delco Sports, and its sponsors are happy to bring these uh, broadcasts to you. You can find them on Channel 3 or on HD 503. This ball game will be Saturday, January the 5th, a week from today at 2 p.m. and next Thursday of the 20th. That will be at 9 p.m. You can also watch these games on demand through YouTube, Facebook, and nktelco.com slash sports. Rebecca Leffel <clears throat> hit her second triple of the game. She's now two for three from that range. Came in the game hitting nine of 31 for 30%. Now has hit three-point shots, 10 and 11 on the season. Assist from Henshin. Good ball movement as it all started from Carson. Dumping down to Avery, who then hit... Leffel, and she finishes it and capitalizes, if you will, finishes it with the three-point shot. Meyer trapped in the corner, kicks it out, and it's off, of, I think, Red's hands. Leffel with the chase, and we're going to have a tie-up at... We'll stay with Houston. We'll stay with Houston on the tie-up. Waterman enters the contest for the Rangers. And Megan Meyer dribbles it across the timeline, start the offense. Now to Boyser. Boyser kicks it over to Maxwell, kicks it back out. There's a drive attempt and a shot attempt. And it Off goes. of Hench, a nice call there. I mean, Avery was standing straight up trying to. Uh, Jeff Grease during there saw it and there was contact but the offensive player basically ran into the defender and I like the, the no call if you will. <clears throat> There's a long rebound grabbed by uh, Carson Henschen. She'll be <clears throat> bringing it across the timeline. Over to Luffle on the left wing back to Gable who curls into the uh, paint. Kicks it back out to Luffle from the left wing. Luffle's off the iron. Rebounded there by Melissa Waterman as Henschen Avery tries to go up for a short one. She's fouled there by Taylor Maxwell. Free throws coming up here for the Rangers. Avery Henschen, Maxwell her first foul, team's third. So Henschen will shoot two. First one is nicely done. Her seventh point of the game. <clears throat> Henshin's next one rolls around and comes out. Yeah. Angels have had quite a few like that tonight by about three or four different shooters. Nice drive yeah, there nice along move. the base. <clears throat> Voizard with a quick move. New Knoxville you know, gambled and then the pass came to Voizard. She was quick. Get around the Ranger defender, pull up and kind of hit a soft jumper there for her first two points of the game. Gable looks to penetrate, gave him the spin move, stopped, 
and continued on with her left hand and off the glass and in. Nice 16 batting. points for Gable. Kind of fooled me, too. I thought she was going outside, but uh, little ball fakes like that, little things can work very nicely. There's a nice drive by again by Katie Meyer. Meyer she this time, her first Katie points of the game. Meyer. She's or set fourth point of the game. She's her leading scorer. So back to back nice plays by Meyer and Boyzard on the offensive end. Four points, the first of the quarter, if you will, for the Wildcats. There's a nice quick play off of several picks as Avery Henshin hits Carson Henshin for an easy layup. Assist to Henshin. She comes in second on the team with assist at 3.4. Gable leads the team at 3.8. And Nice ball movement there and a high percentage shot is finished by Carson Henshin who now has seven points in the game. Ooh. Yeah, there's where the wall up, wall verticality doesn't work as nice bounce pass. It was a key word bounce pass got through the Ranger defender and then let Megan Meyer catch it. Good help side defense by Henshin though results in her third foul. So Avery has her third foul. She'll be taking a seat on the bench as Flutter John Weedock come in for Henson and Gable. Erica Weedock, a 5'5 five, five senior, one of the seven seniors on the team, and basically the only girls that have played so far are the seven seniors. And there's another missed free throw by Houston. Rebounded there by Carson Henson. Haley Flutter John in charge at the point. A skip pass to Haley Flutter John, no good. Rebounded there by Weedock. Kicked around, flopped to the other side. Back a Luffel looking, spinning, turning, kicks it back out. House and man to man defense. They played a lot of zone 1 3 1 throughout the game, playing man to man at least in this possession. There's Luffel, long one, doesn't go, comes back out. Rebounded there by Megan Meyer. She takes it all the way. And then Katie Meyer took a shot, fouled by Carson Henschen at the basket. Her second foul is back-to-back -back Ranger fouls in that format, kind of blocking the shot, if you will, while still in the hand and getting called for body contact. So 38-13 with a minute and a half to go here in period number three. That one by Meyer is no good. Katie, the leading scorer for the Wildcats. Average-wise is 10.2. She has four points today. That might even lead her team today. Yes, it does, but well under her average so far for the sophomore guard. And that one likewise is off. So everybody's got a little problem with shooting free throws and making them. Flutter John handles it. Gable back in the lineup, kicks it down to... Houston back to their 1-3-1 one, one zone defense. Along a short corner there was a shot by Gable, didn't go. Good ball movement. I mean, next time I'd like to see the post player, of course, when they do catch it, usually House and collapses so quick, but that time it almost comes in, goes out so fast, the defense doesn't have a chance to even jump at the ball. Ellie Gable still got a nice shot off. Here comes Slater John. She'll take it all the way and tries to put up a lefty, and she's fouled by Riley Boisard. Flutter John will go to the free throw line, trying, or looking, I should say, for her first two points of the game. So, had a rough night shooting, but has done a lot of other things very well for the 5 5 senior guard. So, Flutter John's first attempt, nothing but net. There's her first point of the game. 62% shooter is Flutter John on the season. Came in five for eight. Make that now six for nine. That one's a little long, Flutter John gets her own rebound. Oop, I thought she could take it to the left. She didn't take it, she kicks it in, gets it out. And Again, we lose just it. a bad angle, the defense too much there, maybe didn't meet, step to meet the pass, but uh, good job defensively by the Wildcats getting the turnover. There's a quick shot from the baseline by Maxwell, nothing. Gable tried to lead a pass for the Rangers. Nothing there, stolen. Weedock chasing 
Berkmeyer over there, and here's a shot by Voisard, and that goes down for three. Five points in the quarter for Riley Voisard, 5'4 senior, just under her average of 5.6. Those are her only five points of the game, but uh, good looking shot there by Voisard. Henshin with a drive, loses the handle, falls down, needs to be picked up by her teammate. That ends the quarter. So, after three complete, it is New Knoxville 39, Houston 16. We'll pause after this break for the fourth quarter. We are here. And here. And here. Minster Bank is everywhere, providing every banking service that you need to keep your financial life in order. Whether you are on the go or stopping by one of our branches, Minster Bank is here for you. We proudly support the communities where you live. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant, whatever it takes. Okay, back here for the Colpe Nedeck fourth quarter as Houston and New Knoxville are squaring off at the barn. Shot by Flutter John, and that I think just nothing but short. Touched the net, but not on the inside, only on the outside. Megan Meyer bringing it across the line for the Cats. The defense for the Rangers, again, has been pretty stable tonight. Just 16 points given up so far. They only give up 24 a game. Offense has been a little frustrating as shooting percentage for the Rangers a little under their average today. And um, I think also the free throw shooting, those things not hitting the free throws has uh, kind of seemed like a bit of a struggle, if you will. Although they lead by 23. I mean, who wouldn't take a 23-point lead going into the fourth? But I think... You know, the Rangers felt like maybe they could have, if you will, dominate a little bit more on the scoreboard. They've done a nice job, you know, to this point, but um, need to maybe finish or complete the task a little bit more aggressively or a little bit more fluidly. Luffel drives to the paint, finds Gable just inside the line. Nice shot, 14-footer, nothing but nets. 18 in the game for senior guard Ellie Gable. She's been basically the most consistent offensive player today, hitting her shots, and although she even also missed a free throw. There's a long one that doesn't go down. Long rebound there, grabbed by Luffel. Advanced by Gable. A three by Carson Henschen. No good. It will stay with the Rangers, it looks like. here in period number four. Skip pass to Flutter John. Avery with it, now back to Gable at the top. No good, rebounded long there by Flutter John and Henschen forces her way between two into the third, goes up and is fouled. Yeah, strong move there, a lot of contact. She was able to get through a couple would-be defenders and then muscled up and have to know, have to get now go to the foul line to finish where she's one for four from the free throw line today. And that one is good. Two for five on the game, eight points for the 5'10 senior, averaging 13.1 a game. Second attempt, that's good. And we've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take a 30 second timeout. So. With this precision strip timeout, we'll stay it's be right a full here. timeout. Oh, They're is? out of 30s. Okay. So then we will now take a break and go back to our commercial break. CarriageWorks has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. CarriageWorks thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. 
CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top of the line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. Park National Bank, Cargill, St. Henry Bank, Chiltex LLC, Speedway Lane. Six minutes plus to go here in period number four of today's contest between New Knoxville and Houston. Katie Meyer has it. Now over to Boyser. Rangers also now in zone defense. I don't know how long that's been going on, but they're in a, well, take that back. It is man to man. I'm not for sure. I thought it was zone, but maybe they it was switching. man to man. So Flutter John has it. She gets bumped. Gable has it, brings it back up on top, keeps her head up though. As she looks inside, tries to find an open person. Now we stay on the outside. Kick there by New Knoxville as the hands from Houston are on it. There's a shot by Voicer. That's that's good. Off the mark and then rebounded by New Knoxville. A lot of contact. Evidently, referees need to get home because, uh, <laughs> wow, blow the whistle and that'll stop a lot of that and make the game actually flow smoother. But uh, tough break for New Knoxville. They create the turnover. There is a steal by New Knoxville. Avery has it. Just, and oh, my goodness. You're going to have a jump ball with the possession arrow staying with Houston. Houston really smothers the ball almost like you do in grade school. I mean, they put a lot of bodies on there. And as long as you're getting away with it, why not? But, boy, a quick outlet or get rid of it, there's got to be, you know, throw down the court. Someone's probably open, and Houston's been playing very aggressive. That's probably why this game seems frustrating, I think, for New Knoxville. It's not been easy, although they have a big lead as Voisard breaks down the Ranger defense and gets a bucket. But, um, you know, they're playing hard, they're down, but it just has been, they've made New Knoxville work, and uh, New Knoxville has not been, let's say, A-plus today. Henshin inside the paint, no good. Long rebound punched out there by Carson. Goes, stays out of bounds as she was on the line. Thought at first she had a chance. So, here comes Meyer again to start the offense again for the Wildcats. 43-18. So Man-to-man defense for the Rangers. Be careful when you head, you can't body check guards outside. Maybe today you can with the game kind of lopsided. And, um, just gotta be careful when you play defense, you use your feet, not your body. And there's a shot I believe rejected by Carson, and Melissa grabs it, but then we have Avery throwing it away. So Avery over. We're talk about why this game can be frustrating. Things like that, it's just been a rough afternoon. I mean, the Rangers are going to hold on here, but uh, you know, easy game to watch film and point at numerous things for improvement and uh, yep. sharpening the pencil, if you will, but uh, give House and credit. they've. They do not for work today, just can't get it done in the offensive end, if you will. Nice cut back door. Wow, like right there, I don't know how you're supposed to get away. She just stood there. Meyer Forster will, got away. She's going to go to the line to shoot two. That will be It was Megan. contact, but um, nonetheless, good move by Megan Meyer. She's going to look to try to cash in on her first free throw make of the game. And, and she, does. she gets it. Meyer, her first point of the game, and she's a nine-point scorer season or on a game, so she's been held in check. Credit New Knoxville's defense, but um, she definitely has scored the ball. She hits two free throws there, two for four. She now is from the free throw line for the five-foot senior guard. 
43 to 20 with three and a half minutes to go in period number four. Man to man now, the Rangers will try to break work down the Wildcats. Yeah, got a little bit of advantage, if you will. Well, talk about this game being frustrating. That um, one didn't get poked away, that just fumbled away. Yeah, that's what, um, you know, sh being sharp and crisp, and New Knoxville commits to turn over the fourth of the quarter. So, and Nelson there's gives a it steal. back their third turnover of the quarter, so kind of a sluggish fourth quarter is maybe a good way to put it. <clears throat> Rangers looking for that backdoor cut against his Houston defense and man to man style. There's a tie up underneath the basket between Henschen and the winner. It will stay with New Knoxville. Team rebound. Carson Henschen in the lineup. Avery Henschen sits down. Here they come, they collapse again. Ball Back. entered in, and there were four, three girls right away on the court for Houston are smothering the basketball. But then they give it back, as there's a, an elbow swing by number 10, Taylor Berkmeyer, and doesn't get called. In the meantime, Rebecca Leffel scores and gets fouled. And she's going to the line for one besides. So that'll be five fouls, I believe, on Emma Kemp. She'll foul out with two points in the game. And off the bench comes Taylor Maxwell. The 5'9 junior. So, Becca Leffel at the line. You mentioned their ability to score. I know they got beat pretty badly by Fort Lormie, but I think even against a good Fort Lormie team, they put up a handful, or you know, a fair amount of points, and you usually don't do that against Fort Lormy. And I think they back 40 41, some, yeah. 41 out of the, you know, Lormy scores the ball efficiently, but 41 against Fort Lormy, that's probably above their defensive average. So 46-20 with about two and minutes and 15 seconds to go. Play smart, finish the game here, two minutes just over, you know, running at New Knoxville. Has been in control today, although they got off to a house and actually had a brief lead early on. And uh, definitely they've made the Rangers work for it and made it uncomfortable is maybe another good word. There's a nice check out by Weedock as she screens off her player and gets the rebound on the long three point attempt by Houston. Gable with a drive that gets deflected. There's a shot by Katie Meyer. That from the top of the key, that's a good one. Her seventh point of the night and uh, good looking shot there and transition somewhat, able to score the basketball. Gable looks, kicks it to Henschen. Goes back, now looks again. Skip pass. Nothing. No back door, nothing. One minute to go. Weedock from long range off the iron. And we have a tie up with Henschen and Peacock. And that'll bring uh, some substitutions as Wingler, Cup, and Wellman enter the lineup for Carson Henschen. Haley Flutter John and Ellie Gable. 50 seconds to go. Nice one, Boyser off the baseline. Rebounded there by Meyer. Rebounded there by Wellman. And we, Wellman gets fouled on the trap or as they try to collapse on her. That'll be foul number seven, so it looks like Wellman's going to the line to shoot a one and one at the other end. So Olivia Lammers enters the lineup for Melissa Waterman. First one up there by 
Wellman is good. Trickles in, hits the front, back, and falls through. Sophomore, her first point of the game coming off the bench. JV team for New Knoxville also victorious today. And the second one nicely done by Kiana Wellman. 40 seconds to go. Meyer has it. Now, now they got it to Voicer along the baseline and tries to throw it out. She gets it deflected, but it stays with Houston, stolen there by Cup. Laura Wingler has it. She's going to be trapped. Now she isn't. She's going to get out of that. A lot of Wildcats on it. So someone is open somewhere, and then Rangers can't find it, but they do get fouled. So Wingler is going to have free throw opportunity here, one on one style. Katie Meyer will be the person in foul problem or with the foul. Wingler at the line, shooting one and one. And that is no good. And I didn't see it. They say that Lammers House must have been on the yeah, line. Yeah, was House and knocked it out, and Lammers went after it. Oh. And could have left it go and taken possession. Instead, tried to secure it and had her foot, I think, on the out-of-bounds line. Meyer has it, drives, skip, Voicer drives, back to Meyer at the top, off of the iron, rebound no good, and game over. Final, New Knoxville 48, Houston 23. We'll be back in just a few moments for the synopsis and stats for the entire game. Stay with us. Winners Meats. Quality meats for four generations. Pogi Lumber. Hilsman Automotive. Are you looking for a new career with amazing growth potential? Needek Press and Automation is hiring for many positions right now. NEDEC is a global company that is growing with its sights on being a billion dollar company. Machinists, service technicians, human resource personnel, IT specialists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and many more. The opportunities abound at NEDEC Press and Automations. Go to MinsterJobs.com now to get started on your new career with NEDEC. I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course. It's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Allglaze and Sydney Audiology are committed to providing the most advanced and affordable hearing care solutions. Did you know that more and more insurances are offering coverage for hearing needs and that we are the most comprehensive provider in the area? Because we want to serve all in our community, we partner with agencies such as Medicaid, OOD, Sertoma, and most recently the VA, helping our veterans find local solutions to their problems. Don't leave unused benefits on the table this year. Call us today to see if you qualify. Lift your career to new heights with Crown, an innovative global leader in the material handling industry with over a 75-year history of growth and success. We're seeking career-minded candidates for a wide variety of entry-level and skilled positions in our new Bremen, New Knoxville, Salina, Minster, and other U.S. locations. Visit crown.jobs to apply or find us on social media by searching careers at Crown. Clope Corporation, America's favorite garage door, is now hiring for all manufacturing and over-the-road Class A CDL driving positions. Clope is the largest residential garage door manufacturer in North America, and we are continuing to grow. Join our team and work in a safe, clean, modern environment. Clope offers a great benefits package as an equal opportunity employer and a drug-free work environment. Imagine the possibilities when you open the door to your career at clopay.com careers. Once again, a reminder that Cope and Nedek of Minster welcome you to this broadcast and are happy to have presented it to you on, on NK Telco Sports. 
where the House and Wildcats were in town playing the New Knoxville Rangers. Today's sponsors were Five Star Recruitment Sponsor, Crown Equipment. MVP sponsors, as I just stated, Clope and Niedek Minster. Scoreboard, First National Bank, keys to the game, Keyhole Pizza. Replays, courtesy of Winter's Meats. Starting lineups, Sydney, Auglaze, Audiology. Timeout sponsor, Precision Strip. Stats and recap sponsor, Wagner's IGA. New Knoxville Live View sponsor, New Knoxville Supply. Our player of the game, which we will designate here in just a moment or so, brought to you by NK Telco. Game will be broadcast, rebroadcast again next week on Saturday, the 15th at 2 p.m. and Thursday, January the 20th at 9 p.m. So an opportunity there to once again watch the replay of this game. Don't forget that in association with NK Telco, WCSM is proud to sponsor sports from all over Alglaze, Mercer, and Shelby counties. And they can be followed on WCSM 1350 or 96.7 FM on the internet exclusive games on WCSM or www.csmradio.com. And you can do this all season long for broadcasts of area and countywide games. I believe we're just about ready for the stats, so if Jeff gives me a thumbs up here, we've got the stats uh, sponsored by Wagner's IGA, and he will also have player of the game, which will be NK Telco. So, are you ready to go there, J.H.? Okay, he says yes, and it is over to Jeffrey Henson. Field goal shooting for the Rangers in the game. Rangers finish 16 of 46 from the field. Of those 46 attempts, they were just three of 21 from three-point range. Field goal shooting for Housen, seven of 34. Included in that, just one of 15. So neither team shot the ball from the field very well. Free throw shooting, less than desirable for each team as well. New Knoxville, 10 of 21. House in 5 of 11, so some points for each team left at the foul line today. Rebounding New Oxford pulled down 36 rebounds compared to 27 for Houston. Turnovers, New Oxford 15 turnovers, Houston 25 turnovers. Scoring for the Wildcats, Riley Boizard and Katie Meyer each finished with seven. Two apiece from the following four girls. Megan Meyer, Taylor Maxwell, Emma Kemp, and Laney Peacock, their total of 23. For New Knoxville, one point from Haley Flutterjohn, nine from Rebecca Luffel, nine from Avery Henschen, seven from Carson Henschen, two from Melissa Waterman, 18 points from Ellie Gable, and two from Kiana Wellman for their total of 48. So that concludes those stats. Our player of the game brought to you by NK Telco will be, he's tabulating folks, Ellie Gable, she finishes with 18 points on a day. She connected on her um, field goal shots of seven of 18. It's not a bad percentage, but uh, compared to the kind of, if you will, the rest of the team a little bit, um, led them in offense with 18 points, hit some shots against a a pesky Houston defense and ends tonight's game uh, five points above her season average. With 18 points, our game-high score. Congratulations to Ellie Gable, our NK Telco player of the game. Okay, that pretty much concludes our broadcast for this afternoon. We will have another broadcast this evening from the barn as the uh, Jackson Center men will come in to play the New Knoxville men. But as for now, that will conclude the broadcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Once again, the final from the barn. New Knoxville, 48. Houston Wildcats, 23. See you again. Thank you.